Yes, for anybody wondering, I am still alive, and welcome back to another uh, video on our Tag Mixer Package series. Hey, it's been a long time, like maybe a month or so. I decided I was going to take a one-month hiatus from doing videos because I had been doing them for almost a year, and I just wanted a short break from making them um, just to kind of recollect where I wanted to take the channel, what direction I wanted to go. Plus, I had a bunch of other stuff I had to do, so... Anyway, but I'm back around, and now I'm getting ready to start making videos uh, more regularly again, continuing on this series, because they all kind of just are sitting right where we left them. And um, if anybody remembers, we were right here. Uh, I had created this chart for us for all of our upcoming stuff, adding metadata, hooking after content, option lets users, you know, select the short codes, all this stuff. And so what we're going to do is we're going to continue right along today with adding metadata with the custom rules. Now, um, if just for a quick refresher for anybody that is not up to speed, um, last time we uh, created this tag mixer packages settings page area that um, lets the so we actually just created that by going to add a tag mixer package and then I just added one Home Depot and then remember we also made it so we could delete packages and that, and then all that. Okay, so in the Tag Mixer Package Settings section, um, when we create a package, they're going to load into here. But the problem is when we click Load Package Rules, it doesn't do anything. And then also if we want to modify anything, there's, it won't save it at the moment. We did add changing font size. Um, if we just put in like 20 pixels or something and we do it, it'll add the text into the box down here. That's adding another rule. And you can also hand type rules. I don't want to make this because it's JavaScript based, how it's going to um, modify the rules on the front end. So um, we're, what we want to do in this video is we want to create meta data for our uh, packages and then we want to save the package settings and then we want to be able to recall those settings out and edit them okay so back in our code this is where it should be in the github if not I'm gonna update it after this video so you'll be right here um, we're at the very top of the tag mixer packages page let's open up this sidebar in the admin partials uh, once again if you go into admin partials and tag mixer packages pages you're gonna have this so at the top, last time, we created a section um, that was basically saying if an action is set and then it determines if the action is update, it does all this. Okay, and we left it open-ended like that so we could add an else if down here to else if if the action is something different. Now, here's something that's going to change a little bit in this video from the last one. If we scroll down to the very bottom of our page, this is where all of our different um, accordions are. That's these things here. Um, and then the third accordion contains the, what we're working on right now. So we can open up the third collapse, collapse three. Um, you're going to see something that we did last time. It's pretty interesting. We actually have two forms going on right here. This is a form in its own, and this is a form in its own. But they're going to interact with each other in kind of a unique way. And this is kind of a way I'm doing it to teach it for post and get. Um, in the initial one, it's going to be a get method, meaning that everything's going to travel through the URL. I keep repeating myself on this, like, video after video after video after video. Sorry about that, but it's important to teach it. Uh, get is going to travel in the url so anything that then the user selects a package and then they click load package rules it's going to travel in the url the package rules that they um selected and so when the page re-arrives what we wanted to do is we wanted to take some of that package information that was sent from when they selected it and we wanted to travel down to the to this form um in order to load in the results and then um when we hit update we want to be able to know that it's working with this package and it wants to update that package so um, we're going to actually be using a combination of get and post here in order to accomplish this um and so back in our main page if we scroll to the top back to that section where we have the uh, get action update and then we scroll down to its bracket right here we're going to write another else if statement and we're going to say else if um, get and then we're going to say the action because that's that's kind of what we're doing everything based on is actions and we're going to say if the action equals and then what we can do is you can scroll down to the form and see what we called the action so in the form where the users loading rules we actually created an action called get the rules so that's what we're going to do we're going to say if the action equals get the rules open up another tag here and now we have a section for the user is trying to get the rules for a current package uh, and we're gonna say maybe to edit them all right so we have another thing we need to do in here and I'm not I'm gonna explain why we have a, a we have a, a small dilemma here so when the user and I created it on purpose so when the user selects this and they hit load package rules a get variable is sent when the user edits the package rules and clicks save package settings we have something else going on if we take a scroll back down to the bottom once more and you take a look at the second form look at its method it's traveling via post 
and it's only it's action is just refreshing the current page and it's going to have page travel as a actually that's traveling as a hidden variable um i don't even think we have to do that here it'll just refresh to the current page as a post so um i think even without page and we'll test that together here in a second though but um anyway the problem here is that when you just refresh using post it doesn't change the url at all at least that's the way I remember it. So the page will just reload right on the same spot. That means that the get variables will still be in the URL. The original get variables. Okay. They're not going to disappear from the URL. Unless we specifically force them to disappear. Or we cut them back or whatever. So that's a small issue for us because we have currently just set up our code to say if the get action is get the rules do this code but we're also going to have a post action that's going to have something else because we're going to create an action variable inside of that form at the bottom so like right here uh, underneath the post form this is the one that actually allows us to add and change code uh, in our package we're going to actually do another input field another type hidden and um uh, not like that and we're going to add a value and then we're going to add a name. I'm just trying to set all this stuff up. And then, okay. So we have another hidden value field now. And in this one, we're actually going to set this one to maybe say something like um, set the rules. So this knows that it's a post and this is going to be our hidden action. Okay. This is actually a post method action. So now we have a get method action and a post method action. We actually have one of each happening here. Okay. Um, and up above, we're going to kind of slide through the code and I'll show you what it does. Cause we're going to actually make it set and do it in this video. Even if it's 20 minutes, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. Okay. And then one other thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have one more hidden input. Uh, and I want to call this one maybe like, uh, Let's just set its value to nothing first. It's actually going to be a PHP uh, set variable. And let's just call this one like uh, the post or something like that. Uh, let's call it um, post updater. Okay, and what this is going to contain is uh, it's actually going to contain the output of um, when the user selects uh, a field here, or not a field, but they select a package to edit and then they hit load the package rules. This sends in the URL. We actually want to grab the unique key right here of the package and set that as a hidden uh, field in this form. Now, why do we want to do that? Well, if the URL changes for any reason or if the user modifies it anyway and then still sets a variable, we're not actually calling to the URL anymore to um, reference the post we want to add the meta to. It's actually kept inside the form. It's self-contained. And I'll explain that once we actually do it if, it's, if that's confusing. But we actually have this, okay? And how do we have this? Well, the user first has to select a package and load the rules in order to, to edit the package. So that's going to travel via get. Remember, this is our get form. It's going to travel in the URL. And if you remember from our last video, we were already working on this uh, up above by allowing the user to, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, like a stern needle. See this? See how it's grabbing the existing packages and it's exploding it? I actually went over this in the last video. If any of this is confusing, go ahead and go back and take a look at that. Basically, what we're doing is we created a separator with a space, a forward slash, and a space. And so it separates it and it creates an array that we can call to to get these um data from the URL. So like zero contains Home Depot, one contains this, two contains this, three contains this. And we broke it down and we had a, um, a needle that we can call to and uh, get that and set that um, needle in order to get the post ID and, and then use that to add and remove um, data from it and things like that. But in this case, we can actually take that same stir needle that has the, uh, the post ID in it and then we can output that as our hidden field. He said, I'm trying my best to be slow about it. I know a lot of it's kind of getting intermeshed in this video. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, believe it or not, we actually need to create an if statement here uh, to handle if the user is trying to uh, read or set data, do this. And what's going to do is we're going to say if, now we're going to call to the post. And we're going to say if the action in the post equals um, set the rules. Remember that? Remember below that we just did that and we created a hidden field called set the rules. Let's double check that that's actually what it says. Name set the rules and the value is, or the name should be, uh, should actually have those backwards. The value should be set the rules. The name should be action. Okay. I had that those backwards. Sorry about that. So back above, now we have a post action called set the the rules that's what should be in it if that's in it a user is trying to set the rules else 
They're just trying to get the rules, okay? And remember, the reason I explain this is because we have a, both a get and a post, and when we first load in the form, or we load in the post um, using the first form, it's going to leave the get variables in the URL even when the user submits the second post form. So if we didn't do this uh, if statement right here to check for this, it would always fire the get the rules. It would never fire set the rules because um, it's still leaving this get action even when we're trying to do this post action. And like I said, once we get to the end of this video and I actually show you it happening in real time, it'll make a lot more sense. So now that we have that set up, anytime the user is going to set any rules, we can do it right here. And anytime the user is about to get any rules, we can do it right here. All right, well, we can actually borrow our code from above, believe it or not, because we're doing something extremely similar to this right here for deleting a package or creating a package or any of those kind of things. We need to get the needle, we need to search, we need to get the post, and we need to um, get any meta it may have. And in this case, it's not really going to have any meta, I guess. Uh, well, I guess we want to get the current rules here. So let's just go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually take all this code from about here up. And we're going to use it in our get the rules. Okay, so we're getting all the packages or our custom type. We're exploding the needle, but it's not called existing uh, mixers anymore. When a user selects this field here and drops down, hits load packages rules, we need to get whatever the ID is of this box, obviously. So down below the name of that box, it's the first form with the get method here, and that's called package rules to edit. That's its name. So that's what we're going to get. We need to put that in our get variable here. Okay, so it's going to get that. It's going to explode it and create a new needle out of it. Then we're going to circle the packages, and we're going to be uh, looking for that the reason we're actually going to circle all the packages and look for that particular uh, custom field, this one here, so we can get the ID of this post, and then we can call its metadata. So this is going to search for it, and it's going to say stir location equals stir pause. See, it's checking to see if uh, if this is the right one, and if this is the right one, then we know we have the. Uh, I, the ID that we need to actually get our custom metadata. All right, so instead of um, deleting anything here, which we're not going to be doing at all, we're actually going to say if this is the correct post, this current post here, see this is the, the code that will fire right here, if the stir location as found, meaning it found that the um, the custom field we're looking for is in the current post, that means that uh, we found the custom post in the database we're looking for. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a new variable called stir get metadata and we're going to say get post meta and this is going to allow us to get post metadata so um, here's what it requires first it needs the id of the post that's why we did this entire loop and the way we can do that is we can say exp key because that's the current post we are cycling and then we can say ID. So now it knows which post ID we want to add meta to. Now it needs a custom field that we need to call this post meta. And I think what we're going to do is maybe call it something like cur um, package rules. That sounds pretty good. And then it's also going to ask us if we want it as a single, meaning we don't want it returned as an array. That's true. We want it just returned as a string. OK, so this is now getting the post meta. Uh, but there isn't any, right? Because nothing has been saved. And when the user tries to set it with the other form, nothing's getting set. At this point, it's just capturing um, some information that the user pushed in. And it's basically saying, here you go. Um, I found the, I got the post meta. I found the post that the user selected from this dropdown. I, this unique key is created. The, like I said, if any of this is confusing, watch the first videos in the series. You'll get caught up here immediately. Every time we create a new package, it creates a unique key for it so we can find it in our database. This is the unique key. So it's essentially circling through and saying, OK, I found it. It's cycling through all the posts. It broke down that um, one by its identifiers, by its unique splitter, and it said, OK, I want to grab that key, and I want to search the database until we find it. I found it. OK, I want you to get the meta under the ID of this post, under cur package rules, and I want it returned as a string. And that's what it's doing here. Now, the thing is, this variable, this fires whenever the user fires this form here. So now our hidden field here that can contain the code, or can contain this um, unique key, uh, we can now actually access that. So it's in our stir needle. So this here can actually be dropped down to the bottom. And on our hidden field right here, um, actually it's a little bit lower under the post one, our post updater value can actually be this. Once again, guys, I will go over this in the end. I know this is confusing because we're getting into some little bit tougher parts of the code here. 
the needle and we need number one, item number one in the array. Stir needle is an array. Okay, so now our post updater contains the unique, this unique value right here. So when this form gets submitted, it knows that it needs to tack it onto the post containing this. It can find it and tack on the meta to it. Okay, so we're almost there. So here's what we're going to do now. Up above, we now have this wide open if statement right here, just waiting for some code. All right, sorry, there was hair all over my keyboard. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do it really similarly to what just happened here. When a user goes to set the rules, what we're going to do is we're going to call in to uh, the same. We're going to search the database. We're going to explode the needle. We're, we're going to explode, or not explode, we don't need to do that next one, but we're going to um, circle until we find the post. We're going to get its ID and we're going to set the data. Okay, so here's how we do that. We need to basically copy everything we just did here up again into here and then we'll do a very slight modification so in this case remember we're now under the post form the form that could that is being submitted via post the one where the user actually just created some rules and submitted it not the one before it so we're going to search all the posts we're not going to be looking for stir needle we do not need that anymore instead what we're going to do is we're going to rename this something else maybe like um stir cur package or something like that and then in stir cur package we're going to be getting a post variable and the post variable is that post updater that hidden field that contains the key we're looking for from the needle in the last post that carried over remember I said the get and the post are gonna be working together here this is where you see it okay now we're getting the post updater that's gonna contain this unique key right here that's what now is gonna be contained in here so when we're looping now we're not looking for a needle we're looking for this which is the same exact thing Okay, so now it's gonna fire the same thing. It's gonna arrive here. We're gonna say stir get metadata. This is gonna remain the same. But here's what we're gonna do instead. We're gonna copy this line right above it. And instead of get post meta, we're gonna say update post meta. And we're gonna say the same key, the same meta, but now instead of it, it retrieving it, it's gonna have set a value right here. And the value that it's gonna set is the value of what's inside our text area the area where the user has added all their code we can scroll down and get the name of it it's the package settings this is the text area this is the name of the package settings that's what's traveling in the post so right here we're going to add that in and now it's going to set that data then what it's going to do is it's going to get that data see first it's it's using this variable to store it to fire the code then it's going to um, use the same variable again to get it so that we can display it down below because if we scroll to the bottom what you're going to see is that the text area right now doesn't have any value in it but we're going to set the value what's in between here and how we do that is we're going to say php and we're going to say echo and guess what we're going to echo stir get metadata because above, that's what's getting the metadata. So it's gonna fire out and show the user what's in the field, what's currently in that field, okay? Then let's go ahead and make ourselves a little label um, that will make things easier on us to know what we're dealing with. So let's go ahead and just create like a paragraph. Yeah, paragraph's fine, I should be using Emmet. Okay, and then let's just style it up, uh, something so it's like big enough that we can see what we're doing. So let's just say font weight bold, and then maybe like font size, um, 20 picks or something like that. And then we're gonna say package being edited in a space and then some PHP, some magic, magic, magic. And then we're gonna edit, we're gonna echo out. Remember that I said the post variables are still gonna be contained in the URL. The post variables, I mean the get variables from when the user did this. So tag mixer package name or tag mixer package key. No, it's actually a different field. Let me go back here. We didn't actually say that form. So up above, when the user selects it, remember it's package rules to edit. That's the name of the get variable. So that's what we're going to use as our echo. So we're going to say get and then package rules to edit. So it'll tell us what package we're currently working on. Okay, if I didn't break every, anything horrendously, this will work to some extent. Actually, you know what? Instead of adding a new package, let's see what we got here. I just added double. I knew I would do that. <clears throat> I knew I would do that. So what we need to do is delete this package. We should still have one package. Oh no, it deleted them both. That's because you can't have them both the same. 
Let's just do the Home Depot. See how it's generating a new key each time. Save it. We're going to have a new package ready to go. And then I'm going to visit the page again. Okay, now we have it here. So if we load package rules, you're going to see it says rules being edited, right? This is the one that's currently queued up to be edited. So now let's go ahead and change the font size maybe to like 20 picks or something. Okay, and we add that below. Now let's try and save it and see if we got this working. Aha, we do. Now how do we know that? Because it just called back in. It just reposted it back in, right? Otherwise it would have just disappeared. And then let's also go back and refresh the page again and head back down and then just load the package rules and it should load that in. And then what I'll do is I'll do a quick uh, recover of what we just did. Okay, and there it is and it tells us the package that we're currently working on. So a quick rundown of what just happened. When we first came into here, none of this stuff worked, obviously. <laughs> so that's the first thing. But secondarily, what we did is we have two forms here, okay? We have a get-based form right here. This is a totally get-based form. Then we have a post-based form. And we had a small dilemma. The dilemma is as follows. When the user selects a, uh, a drop-down from here and loads package rules, the URL contains it because it's get. And we use some of that get variable to fill some hidden fields in our post, okay? Primarily the ID, the custom ID of the, the key of the post so that when we save these rules, the meta, we can cycle the database until we find that unique key, which will identify this post's ID. Then we can grab that ID and we can add the metadata to its ID. Because that's how WordPress does it. You need to have the ID of the post. So we need this. We, we travel it from the... That's why we have this field. We're traveling it from this get to this one. Okay, but when we submit the post form, the URL remains the same, meaning that this information, the loading package rules, tries to load again. So in the code we had to do is we had to split it off and say, okay, we need to determine what the user's trying to do. And I created this, this whole issue on purpose to teach you the difference. So if we are looking for an action of get, forget the rules, it says, okay, that exists. Then it says, if also if the user's trying to currently set rules via the post, we need to do this and skip this other else statement. Otherwise, if we were just searching it based on get the rules, then we had an else if, see if we had, a, if we had an else if get action, get the rules, then we had an else if post outside of this, it would always fire this code right here. It would never make it to the next one because this is always going to be true even when the user is trying to set rules because one is get and one is post. So then what we did is we did the basic code we've done the whole time. I copied it from above and just reworked it. it gets all the packages under our, our custom package. Then uh, like let's start with the easier one. Then it explodes it with a needle. Remember, it creates an array of four items, 0, 1, 2, 3, which contains this string here broken into four parts, and it needs this part here. Then it cycles the database until it finds that code, and it says, okay, I found that custom um, string uh, attached to this post, so then it, get, it has the ID of the post it needs, and then it's able to add metadata. Okay, then above, it does the same exact thing, except it updates the metadata at that, and then uh, and then re-outputs it to the user. So that's all we're doing here. We're getting the post, loading it in, getting its metadata. Then when the user sets all this and hits it, it sends it via post, not get, and then it's able to um, add new code on top of it. Okay, we can actually probably do that right here too. I'll bet. Let's just save package settings. That should all appear in there. Okay, see? So the page just reloaded, and now it's in the database as a custom rule. So in the front end, when I call the metadata for this post ID that contains this code right here, guess what's going to um, display between the JavaScript tags when I set that? You see how this is going to work? And then how is it going to know to fire that? We're going to create if statements in the page in our short code that determines um, if the user is running a package and if it's looking for a particular keyword. And if that keyword's met, it's looking for this package and it needs to display this code. So we're going to be able to change our advertising real time based on whatever uh, the user, whatever package the user has. So okay, I think this video is probably like 25 minutes by this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and wrap it up. But um, hey, it's good to be back with you guys. I hope this video is helpful. I'm really looking forward to making more videos. I really actually want to get this um, plugin done and then uh, swing back through it and professionalize it and then actually submit it. Remember, that's the point of this whole series is to actually submit it to the WordPress database. So um, I hope that helps you out and I hope that that kind of makes sense. I know this was kind of a harder video. These ones are always tough for me because I'm always trying to um, uh, explain kind of like an advanced topic in a short window and sometimes especially somebody who's like still relatively new to making videos um, it's tough so I get to add that little check mark
Okay, so in the next video, we're going to be hooking after the content to see what our plugin does. We're actually going to do a small test and output the code we just made, the font change. And we're actually going to make a real page that um, has the ID of the element we want to edit and all that. And uh, we'll actually put it out and see what it does. And then we'll start to make some more of the... Um, We'll actually go at it if the user can do site-wide option or a short code. That's letting them decide if they want to do it site-wide or add a short code to the pages they want advertising on. We'll move on to doing the rest of our JavaScript options, um, all these built-in things. Maybe we'll add more. And, uh, and I look forward to just trying to plow through and make some more videos on this. So, hey, I appreciate you guys watching. If you're already subscribed, I appreciate you. And if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and do it. It don't cost you nothing except for clicking a button. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.